So, um, good afternoon, everyone. So, my name is Justin, and today I'll be explaining surgery in an extrusion process. So, my advisors were Professor Barry and Professor Gasmir, uh, with our mentor, Mr. Virun Dinor, and my lovely colleagues, Mike and Laura. So, before I get into the nitty and gritty stuff, I just want to introduce you to the best major here in campus of plastics engineering. So, what is plastics? Well, um, imagine your big oil drills down in Texas or your uh, offshore drills in the Pacific Ocean. This is how we get our plastic. It basically comes from oil. And basically, um, we get crude oil, natural gas uh, through fracking or black oil. And basically, we try to get single molecule substances called monomers. And we try to make them up or polymerize them, which we get, uh, which we in turn get into plastic. So the first plastic was actually made by this guy called Helio Bakeman in early 20th century. We acted phenol and formaldehyde under high heat and pressure, and we basically got this brownish um, but strong and malleable material. So there are three main ways that um, we can plast uh, process plastic. The first one would be extrusion. That's what I'm going to talk about today. And this basically this is how we get our pipes and tubes. The second one would be injection molding. Um, basically, it's like extrusion, except we have a mold or cavity. And this is how we get, again, our electronic parts or toys. The last one would be blow molding. I'm sure all of you are familiar with it. And we basically like injection molding. Um, we also have a mold and cavity, except we try to expand or introduce air pressure to uh, get the shape that we would want. And this is how we get our disposable containers or milk bottles. So here is an example of a basic extrusion line. We have a hopper, something called an extruder, and it's composed of a screw, extruder barrel, and a breaker plate. It also has something called a die or a shape. Um, it goes through something called a gear pump, which is for output stability. It's rarely used. Um, an inline head, a water bath, a laser micrometer, a puller, and a cutter. So one of the more important things I said was something called a screw. And basically, this screw is just to convey or melt your polymer or plastic. So it's composed of three main zones. The first one would be something called a feed zone. And in this feed zone, we want to make something called a solid bed, or basically just try to preheat your polymer. Um, it goes through the transition zone, and this is where all the fun stuff and magic happens. This is where we want to basically melt and mix your polymer or plastic. Then it finally goes through your metering zone, where we just want to build up or generate pressure and fully convey that to your orifice or your shape that you want. So, what is our objective for this um, research? Well, our objective was basically to characterize surging with three different screws. So what is surging? Well, surging is actually just your extra variation, or basically your pipe or tube can have different sizes. And of course, we want a stable and reliable process. So uh, we find want to like, test it in different screws, or as I said. So this guy called Jim Franklin said it's caused by three things. Um, it's caused by inconsistent feed rate, channel plugging in your melting zone, and unstable plastic section. Other literature says that um, it's actually caused by your pellet distribution in your screw. So you can see in figure A, um, we want something that's very neat or evenly distributed. But of course, that's unrealistic. Um, B is a more realistic interpretation or like um, what really happens inside your screw. Uh, we have slight variances in your pellet size and maybe gaps in between them. Well, C, um, something that we really don't want and is likely to cause like your variation in surging is basically um, your pellets are all over the place and like have big gaps in between them. And this does happen with, um, when we use materials like free grind or recycled materials. So there are three main designs, but today I'll be discussing two. We have something called a conventional screw. And basically, it's characterized by a single flight. And basically, your, uh, that gap between your flight and your screw itself, which is what we call a channel depth, it basically decreases a longer transition zone or that middle sort. Uh, the next main design is called a barrier screw. And it's basically like the uh, conventional screw, except we have another slide or a barrier slide. And basically what it does is basically separate your molten polymer and your unmolten polymer. And we like that because it helps in your mixing or it sometimes decreases your pressure or well temperature. So here are the screws that we use. We use the general purpose screw, the barrier screw, and something called a fractal screw. Um, it was designed by our advisor, Professor Kazmir. And basically what uh, the fractal screw does is basically try to um, mimic a better even distribution or a uh, better filling of your polymer, or what he would like to say, individual pellet extrusion. So here's just a quick schematic diagram of our different screws. Uh, you can see the single flights in our, our general purpose screw. Our barrier screw has a double flight. And basically our fractal screw is like, it's based on fractals. 
So here's just, I'm just going to quickly brief through my experimental setup. So like Mike, we also use the data standard single screw extruder. It's located in ball 116 in the recycling lab. Um, we also have something called a multivariate controller. And this is how we acquisition them. They basically got our data. We have our circulating shutter, our rotary encoder, and a pressure transducer. We also had a four millimeter strand die, a standard breaker plate, which might pass around, and a con air hot dryer. So we also have a water bath puller, optical gauge and cutter, and we used high impact polystyrene, which is an amorphous material by MS. Um, we dried it at 80 degrees Celsius. And um, these are our processing temperatures. We kind of tried to profile it. Um, the processing range of high impact polystyrene is, uh, I think, 180 to 280 degrees Celsius. So we were well within that range. And we basically tested our screws at two screw speeds, 20 and 40 RPM. And each test took around 20 minutes for it to stabilize and basically get data. And uh, we used a pneumatic drill to basically change that screw. So um, naturally, or traditionally, we would use like a hammer and chisel. So that's not something we'd want to do. And we use basically MATLAB to analyze, um, or we pick the last 60 seconds to analyze that data. So here's just a quick overview of the different materials and equipment. So here's just a quick picture and a quick gist. So here's our control panel, our barrel and screw, our con air hot dryer, our die, and the vent if you guys don't want to smell um, bad plastic, water baths. Uh, we have our laser micrometer, our belt puller, and our cutter. So basically, here's the fun stuff. Our results. So we kind of analyzed it in six different ways. Our melt temperature, our dye pressure, extradate width, extradate height, cross-sectional area, and our speed. So let's begin with our melt temperature. Um, the main findings that you saw in our melt temperature was that um, our fractal screw and our barrier screw actually um, had higher melt temperature basically at the higher screw speed, and that's significant because um, according to literature, um, a higher screw speed might cause surgery, so that's a bit of a concern. Um, again, as Mike was saying, in his uh, breaker plate study, our coefficients of variance were very little. So again, it might not be significant. Two degrees, uh, two degree mean difference might not be very you know, important. In terms of die pressure, um, you see that our fractal screw actually had the lowest die pressure, and in literature, again, it says that our die pressure, when it's very low, it can actually indicate surgeon. Um, we also don't want a very high pressure um, because that can itself degrade your material. So again, um, it's very inconclusive, but it is right to say that our coefficients of variance, just um, or rather the standard deviation, is very, very small. It's in the hundreds, and uh, it's, even, it's even in the thousands. So it might not be very significant. <laughs> so in terms of screw speed, uh, we compared our general purpose screw and fractal screw. And you kind of see that, again, you see a lot more noise, or basically a lot more waves in our blue line, which is our fractal screw. And we again see that the general purpose screw performed better in theory and might have caused less surgery. <laughs> so um, I'm just presenting my extradate width and height. An interesting thing that we found out was that after the extra date where your pipe and shoe was coming out of that water bath, it was actually turning. So when we were uh, checking the data, we saw that when we were measuring our width, we might have been measuring our height, so we didn't know. We kind of swapped it. So that's why we, um, we evaluated through the cross-sectional area, which is pi over, uh, pi over four times your width and height. And basically, we determined that, or we found that, that uh, the general purpose screw had the highest cross-sectional area, while your barrier and fractal screws had very similar ones. Um, again, you can see that considerably in terms of standard deviation, it didn't really change, or it was also in the tens. And one maybe noticeable thing that visually that we saw was that at a higher screw speed, um, we had more pellets, and then of course, this would be logical since there would just be more pellets com or like more material coming out. And I just wanted to show that again, um, it seems to have more variance on our fractal screws. 
in terms of our screw speed or uh, screw cross section and error with the screw speed. And basically, again, it doesn't look very good for the <laughs> fractal screw. However, um, when we go back to our melt temperature, there's not, we, see, we still see a very tight distribution. And again, it might not be a good indication of whether indeed that uh, there was surging actually happening. So again, our diet temperature, we see in this narrow distribution. Um, there's not much to basically, we wanted to see some sharp transitions or something ver basically varying. And again, it seems to be very nice. So just a quick summary. So our melt temperature was constant. Our diet pressure was lowest in our fractal screw. Our general purpose produced the largest cross section of the area. General purpose had the lowest uh, coefficient of variance than the fractal uh, in our screw speed versus sectional area. So maybe some recommendations. We could have used a different material. We could have used semi-crystalline semi like polyethylene or polypropylene. So that would have inhibited more shrinkage. And maybe you could have added <laughs> our very rich screw motor speed, which we didn't include because of a very mishap. <laughs> and maybe, again, I think I need more retrial and further analysis. I just did this like a week ago. So again, um, here's just some references and some our raw data files. But basically, I was showing you our detrended, trended basically that green line. That's what I was showing you. So you can see a lot of, um, <laughs> It's very, very uh, depressing looking at this at 2 a.m. in the morning, but that's how research goes. Uh, so I just want to thank Mr. Green Tate, Ms. Megan, and KS for paying me. <laughs> Museum of Science, the NSF, and of course, the Mass Law. And uh, I really deeply appreciate uh, Professor Barry, Mike, and Varun who are here, and the Kazmir family who kind of believed in me and basically took me in this summer. So. Forever, I'll, I'll forever be grateful for them. So thank you very much, everyone. you really don't know what results you're going to have. We expected that our fractal screw was going to be better, you know, in theory, or that's what Professor Kazmir told us, because he designed it himself, so we thought that would have been the best, or, you know. And again, we didn't expect that the general purpose screw might have fared better, at least initially. Any questions? I have a couple. Um, can you go back to your, your slide that you Thank you very much.